Good afternoon and um, welcome to the after lunch session on the day after the conference party. So if you need to shut your eyes for brief periods while you take in this presentation, uh, we'll understand. If you need to snooze, it's probably okay. If you snore, we're going to ask you to leave. Um, Anyway, hopefully there's enough to pique your interest here um, uh, with this uh, introduction to a new tool in the Neo4j ecosystem, Neo4j Ops Manager. Uh, quickly, introductions. I'm Richard McCaskill. I'm a product manager working on the core database team for Neo4j. Uh, I'm not the product manager for Neo4j Ops Manager, though, so I'm, a, I'm an understudy. I'm standing in for my colleague Chris, who, Chris Shelmadine, who unfortunately couldn't make it to Graph Connect this year. Um, but uh, I'm going I'm, I'm to try and stand in and uh, be an adequate replacement and give you some context on what we're trying to accomplish with Neo4j Ops Manager. Um, so we'll get to the demo and the technical details shortly, but first let's quickly check on the context, uh, the current situation, and why we wanted to do something to improve it. So first of all, graph growth, explosion in graph databases across the use cases. We all know this. Everyone in this room knows this stuff, so uh, slightly redundant perhaps. But, uh, but the, as we're moving towards that position as a, a great general purpose database, as well as the great uh, specialist uh, graph database, more and more, the platform is no longer in the hands of the early adopters, the, the cutting edge advocates, the sort of the wizards who are happy to do things at the command line or, you know, have been there for as long as uh, Jim has, as you, if you saw in the presentation uh, earlier and know it inside out. But also the deployment modalities are getting ever more complex. On-premises is still around very much, uh, but also uh, fully managed with Aura, also self-hosted in private clouds, and Kubernetes is, the, uh, is very rapidly increasing for the so people who take the self-managed options and Docker's around too. So there's more and more ways and more and more places that uh, Neo4j is being installed. And again, across the product, we're, we're adding more to manage. There's more of that good stuff that Jim talks about, the, the boring stuff that got added in three and then got honed and tuned in four that makes it an enterprise capable uh, uh, database. Uh, that's, that's getting more complex. Things like uh, you know, full role-based access control right through, the, uh, right through the database. It's not trivial to manage that stuff and uh, doing so uh, with li you know, limited tooling is uh, more and more a challenge. Data size, of course, we've got the uh, you know the, the explosion in complexity as measured through uh, uh, data size. You may you might, you might have noticed that chart in uh, Jim's uh, keynote this morning. Uh, that was a customer, uh, well-known real-life customer, building a Neo4j database where the 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 input data was being measured in petabytes. Uh, so it's, that's genuinely that's, uh, it's not the future; it's happening now. Um, and to respond to that scaling challenge, of course, we're, we're improving the scale outs that we already have with Fabric and with sharding and introducing autonomous clusters, you've seen in the keynotes as well, where databases are distributed by the cluster platform in response to your requests. Um, so that you don't no longer have one database per instance. So the whole topology is uh, significantly more complex. And if you observe a need to scale out by uh, uh, adding, pushing your database to more instances, you can adjust the instruction to the cluster platform and it will do that for you. And also, of course, pressure to del deliver. That only goes in one direction, right? The, the Taking an afternoon out to configure an integration with some third-party tooling so you can do the monitoring is, is less and less uh, easy, to, easy to win time for in your organization. So uh, existing options, um, we've got the, you know, there's, the, 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 there's good integrations with third-party monitoring tools, but they require set up separate licenses, support contracts, it's extra burden. And the context isn't always right by default. The, you know, you've got, to, you've got to kind of zoom in so, so that you're looking at the right things, so that you're understanding, you know, how uh, Neo4j is performing, not, just, not necessarily just your, your, your server. Uh, the command line interfaces uh, require you know, quite a bit of uh, training knowledge. Um, takes a while to to get up to speed, and that can be steep for DBAs who are more accustomed to uh, other database systems. Neo4j is typically deployed in a multi-database context, and the people administering it are often used to other systems. So we've lacked a single place, that single pane of glass for monitoring, administering, and operating your Neo4j estate. So. 
what do we want? What, what was the what was the North Star for the for the team uh, for, for for Chris and Costa and the, the team building uh, near for J Ops Manager? Uh, the perfect world we'd be able to monitor easily with the push of a button. We we hook up and we can monitor. We can see the health. We can see uh, the metrics. We'd be able to do some. An increasing amount of configuration and administration, uh, work with databases at scale without becoming a, an absolute guru uh, who uh, knows the ins and outs and every of every version and every uh, tweak and uh, command line option. Uh, automate some of the main mundane tasks everyone needs to do backup, um, and it's not just hit run a backup. As we you know as we get better at this, we can hopefully move into um, helping you to achieve your uh, recovery time objectives and your recovery point objectives. Uh, backup isn't all about um, uh, just get me a copy somewhere in case it all blows up. Um, uh, I mean, there's, there's so many more opportunities to, for, for automation. Um, and evaluate, tune, um, and monitor your performance over time. Uh, get the end. That's that we want to move that out of the area of the, 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 the very experienced specialist and into the, the sort of everyday, um, uh, uh, the every person um, administering Neo4j. So what does the solution that we want look like? It's, uh, it's, it's got built-in intelligence. So, so lots of uh, other enterprise databases, the, the, the common, a common theme is that the perfect configuration isn't uh, always available. It depends on the specifics of your workload. So what we very much want to do is get to a point where observing the customer's Neo4j system can yield recommendations in areas like uh, query authoring, uh, index configuration. And uh, fundamentally, we want to put some of the, the knowledge that we've acquired uh, over a you know, decade plus of operating Neo4j platform and supporting customers, get that knowledge in, you know, box, put it in a box and get the results to you through software. Um, and that's the vision for the, sort of the, 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 the th third part of that, is getting the built-in intelligence. Um, so uh, with Neo4j Ops Manager, we believe you can get improved re reliability, you can cut time to detection, uh, uh, can improve fixed times when things do go wrong, um, preventative work to, uh, through monitoring health metrics, see problems before they happen, um, and productivity through, through ramping you up, getting, uh, getting um, familiar terms on top of some of the Neo4j specific configuration terms and configuration options. Um, make it much, much, there's an awful lot of configuration settings, as we all know, in Neo4j. Um, uh, simplify it and uh, present it in a way that's easier to understand. Then move into that optimization phase. Get, get, the, uh, uh, get the operations manager software to, to help you to make the best choices and get the most out of your, your investment in Neo4j. So very brief, briefly, Costa's going to go into this in, in much more detail. What is it? What do you get when you get near for j Ops Manager? Um, looking from left to right, we built our software using our software uh, where, wherever we could, of course. So looking from left to right across this architecture diagram, the non-persistence is, a, of course, it's a near for j database. The user interface talks to the, uh, the NOM server using near for j GraphQL. Uh, use a, a, to, to build up a GraphQL API. Um, and uh, uh, so we've got the, on the left-hand side, we've got the user side. Um, we've got talking to a NOM server, and it's agent-based. We have a, a, a NOM agent, which will sit on the machine, uh, which is running the Neo4j uh, DBMS that you're, uh, that you're monitoring. So we could have a, you know, we'd normally expect to see a, a, a one-to-many from uh, uh, servers to agents. So run along some principal loosely coupled APIs and a thin client. Um, and uh, we've got, we've divided, subdivided the, uh, the interface into feature frameworks that we can plug things into as we go along. So without any more ado, let me hand over to Costa, who did actually build the product as part of the NFG Ops Manager team. He'll take you into what you really want to see, which is the demo. Hey. <laughs> hey, hello everyone. My name is Costa Alexoglu. I'm a senior software engineer at Neo4j. And um, we're going to see some terminology um, in order to get started, then the demo setup 
what is an agent, and the last three parts are going to be the actual demo of Neo4j. First of all, we have a single instance, which is basically a Neo4j server running. A cluster, which is multiple Neo4j instances communicating together, forming a cluster. And then the databases, a named set of storages, and Neo4j comes uh, by default with two databases, Neo4j and system. And in our case, we have the demo setup. On the left part, we have the ops manager, which is basically uh, a Spring server. Just uh, to correct Richard, only on this, we don't run Neo4j GraphQL. We run a native GraphQL client because we have a Spring <laughs> Java server. And um, on the right, we have the monitored systems. So in our case, we will monitor two systems, one cluster and one single instance. And you will notice some uh, arrows. You cannot see my pointer, but you will notice some arrows with a circle, which is basically the agent communicating back with Ops Manager server. And on the first, yeah, for sure. Uh, so your, single, your Ops Manager, yeah. that's a Neo4j database yeah. with the software for the Ops Manager. Yeah, so on, uh, I cannot uh, display. So this part is Ops Manager. It's like an installation you can install anywhere you wish, and then cloud provider, whatever you want. And this is the monitor system. In so, our case. So for that database, currently, uh, when you purchase an FJ, you pay for cores and RAM. It's a, is that database also part of that? That's a great PM question, not a question for me, but I suppose, yeah, 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 yeah. But, but I suppose uh, it comes free with enterprise. From license, yeah. from license perspective, perspective, you mean? Yeah. You mean from license perspective? Yeah. That's supposed to be come in enterprise licenses, you mean, yes? Yeah. Yeah, so we, you don't have to purchase it separately? No. I, I guess if it's free. It's, it's, my understanding is it's, it's part of enterprise, and it's only enterprise for now. Mm. Yeah. Or enterprise. Correct. Mm, perfect. And, yeah, so. Uh, Even if it's clustered, because you don't have a single server. Like, yeah, uh, I suppose the plan would be to have it clustered if you have a lot of data to, to monitor. Yeah, but uh, I'm not the right guy to, to ask, to be honest, yeah. And, and, P, and like the actual paper from the team is missing, so sorry for this. Yeah, but um, yeah. So from the monitor systems, we communicate with the ops manager server via gRPC, secure gRPC, and we send the data back. But what is actually an agent? An agent is basically a small Golang executable that we attach to our instances in order to grab OS and Neo4j related metrics and send them back. And it acts as a proxy for Ops Manager on the host. So basically, it solves the firewall problem. Now, before even starting the demo, I will create a small, a small workload so we can see how it reflects to, to the Ops Manager platform. So let's go ahead. To do this, I will use a CLI tool from, uh, from David Allen. Uh, but let's bring this here. That was my swag, yeah. <laughs> so wh what we are doing here is basically we connect to the cluster core 2 and to display briefly the topology, we have our cluster running uh, in separate VMs in GCP. And we are connecting to cluster core 2 and we will execute some read and write queries. And we will do this for 180 seconds, so for three minutes straight. So it started, it started running. I will let it run on the background. And we can continue with the demo. Oops, spoiler alert. Yeah, and the first part uh, would be how to monitor our Neo4j infrastructure. And um, I will show you now how Ops Manager looks like. We have our login screen. Let's connect. And the first screen you land is the home page so when you have a, an overview of your systems. As you can see, we have two systems, the cluster system here, which is part of three instances. 
as I've mentioned before, uh, we have a fourth instance, the read replica that we don't actively monitor, and then a single instance on the right. Everything is online and running. And then the high level alerts, we have a warning, and uh, what it basically says is that for our cluster, we have an instance that we don't actively, yeah. Yeah, this is, this is something we want to implement, like triggering alerts every time we detect something and also customizable alerts so you could define your own thresholds so we can alert you on stuff. Right now it's pretty static, only alerting inside Ops Manager, nothing to, yeah, to ping you. So you say you don't monitor read replicas? We monitor read replicas, but we have not installed an agent yet. Oh. We will do this in the last part of the demo. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a great question. Uh, the first is that it, it, it's easier because you don't have to open anything uh, from from the firewall, and then we grab also OS metrics because Neo4j comes with a Prometheus endpoint, and we actually scrape this ourselves, but we augment like the data with OS related, and we can have some uh, remote execution in case you want to do some fancy backups and stuff that we will discuss later in the roadmap. Yeah. So that, those are our top level alerts. And here we have a drop down that you can switch between your systems. As you can see, I switch, but nothing happens because I'm in the top level. And now from status panel and below, we have the pages tailored for our monitor system. This is our status panel. Again, we'll drill down now to the topology of our system. And you can see a single instance and the two databases running, uh, two, two standalone uh, databases near for Jane's system. And let's switch to our cluster. Now we have the three instances, and you can see in uh, which instance you have the followers. And for example, sorry, it's not mirroring. Uh, we have Neo4j and the leader on core two, and system databases leader in the core three. And we have also the tabular view, uh, which is a tabular representation of what you are seeing, you, we can search for Neo4j and we can see that it's a leader on Neo4j. And for everyone who is familiar with, yeah, with administrator or with administrating Neo4j, you can see that this is basically the same output as executing by yourself the so databases command in browser. Now the dashboard, um, we have um, a time window of the live means the last 30 seconds, then uh, the last 24 hours and the last three days. Some static data, um, like uh, how many cores you have, physical or logical, uh, memory and swap memory. And then some starts, mm -hmm. and you can see here for the minor workload we created, we can see a really small spike for the core two. They're like really inactive. It's a really active class member, but um, yeah, in production it will look totally different. Then we have instance metrics. Um, again, how much heap used, file descriptors open, and how they change, and all that fancy stuff. And uh, as discussed in um, in the future, we want to implement some uh, some threshold so they will trigger alerts in order if you have an incident you want to investigate. And the databases metrics. Uh, Again, a drop down so if, you, if you want to select the database. Right now we have only two databases, Neo4j and System. And from the spike here, we can see that we executed most stuff for the cluster core two. So we had a spike on cluster core two, but not on the other members. Um, yeah, and all that fancy stuff you can uh, also grab from Prometheus, as you've mentioned. And then the alerts, again, the alert we display it in the, in the home view, but they are filtered on our system. So for the single instance, we don't have any alert, but we have for the cluster. And in the last part, we will solve this alert by attaching an agent to our system. So that was how we, how we monitor and observe our Neo4j infrastructure. Those were backup videos in order we have a failure. Yeah, thanks God we don't so far. Perfect. And now how we can speed up some operations. And the first part would be, let's do this with a scenario. We onboard in their star company. 
And because we all know that inters are breaking stuff, we will create some privileges. Uh, so we will demonstrate how we can create privileges really easy with Ops Manager. So they will not be able to write anything to the production database, but they will be able to read. To do this, let's go to security panel. We have our users tab. Let's go and create a new user. Intern breaking stuff. That's the name of our user, a password. And then some options, like if we want them to change the password as soon as they register, uh, if they are active or suspended, and um, if, if we want to override the user, if the user already exists. The cool stuff we have also, uh, besides that, uh, we can uh, give that mineral. This will never happen, but. We have also the show cipher command, so you can create your own user. And then if you want to implement those scripts, uh, like those cipher command in scripts, you can just copy this command. And you will notice that public role cannot be deleted. It's because we want to display that public role is automatically assigned to every Neo4j user by default. Yeah. So does that imply that the monitor is an admin connection to your cluster like Sorry? You, you said the security, you actually the cluster or the yeah, so in our case right now, we are connected to the cluster right. system, so we create inside the cluster. So that implies that this ops manager has to have admin access to Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Is there a LDAP integration with user creation? Not yet. Yeah. Uh, yeah, everything's perfect. Yeah, we created the user, and now we can see the user here. We have our inner user, then uh, let's create a role to assign to this user. Uh, interns, and we can assign the role. Again, we have the show code command, uh, which is a basically cipher, a pretty basic cipher command, create the role and grant the role. One thing that is not natively cipher that I did not display is that uh, when you go and delete users from Ops Manager, we have. Um, an option to kill queries and connection running. So this is basically like, like the Facebook when you go and change the password, they ask you, do you want to disconnect from all the devices? It's basically the same. Um, if someone is connected and running a really long query, you can disconnect them um, out of the box. But it's not reflected in the Cypher command because this is something we do uh, on the back end ourselves. Let's not delete. Now we have the role. The next part is the privilege. And this is the most painful thing uh, in the DBAs, as I have experienced, and uh, I haven't found anything like really straightforward to do, but I hope it's really straightforward here. So our main action, we have two actions. We can grant or we can deny a privilege. In our case, we will deny a privilege. What we want to deny? We want to deny our renders to create. To create where? To create in every graph. We don't want them to write anywhere. And to write what? to write elements. Uh, for anyone who is not familiar, elements are basically nodes and relationships, in our case. And we don't want them to write anything at all. And the role we want to assign is interns. So here, again, the cipher command, deny, create on graphs and the wildcard mean every graph, elements, every element, um, to the role interns. We can create the privilege. And let's search in there. You can see that uh, Cypher and Neo4j behind the scenes actually creates two Cypher privileges um, when you write elements. So we restrict the node and the relationship creation. Does that include merge? What? Yeah, you can. Yeah, I, I, I don't deny this, to be honest, in this one. It's just for creating nodes. Yeah, not for merge. But we have a privilege for merging also. You can deny this too. And let's say we change our, might, uh, our minds. You can revoke the privilege really easy. You just uh, press the revoke button. And what is revoke? revoking is just prepending the revoke keyword uh, on front of your Cypher command, and everything works. That's about privileges. 
and now we don't let them create any node, but we let, we let them create relationships for some reason. Next screen, about page, real basic stuff, like the, your system that you want. Uh, yeah. So let's say if I go to the database and create a user, yeah. will it pop up here? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm. Yeah, right now we refresh data every 10 seconds. Yeah, but uh, in the future we will make it customizable. So you will, you will be able to change this from the UI or from the GraphQL API because we will also provide a GraphQL API for the developers to, yeah, to communicate with the Ops Manager server. Then the about page, basic stuff for the system version, the GNOM version, and the addition, uh, you will always see enterprise. Yeah. Yeah, no, 4.4, four, 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 four. yeah, yeah, from 4.4 four four yeah, four, onwards. Four, 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 okay. Yeah, 4.4 four onwards. Any version of 4.4, but the latest is the best. Yeah. Then the upgrade screen, uh, this is the most promising and um, on progress, we have the current version, which is 4.4.3. We can see that we have a status that upgrades are available and uh, when is the support ending for the current version. And below we have a table with all the, all the available versions to upgrade. And you can see we have four available versions, the release notes and the download link. In the future we want to provide more of a wizard approach on how we, you can upgrade your, your own instances. I know it's hard. I, I, I noticed your presentation yesterday about uh, how you do stuff. Uh, this will be a huge challenge, but this is our goal to, to, to make it um, uh, work. This is upgrade of your database cluster model. <coughs> yeah. Operations yeah, 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 exactly. 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 For, for the cluster you monitor, or for the system you monitor in general. Yeah. And this is pretty much about upgrade spades. And the last part, we want to remove this alert. And to do this, we need to attach an agent. Let's go and refresh real quick. So three core instances. And uh, from the DCP, we can see we have three core instances actively monitored and one the read replica that is not actively monitored. So to do this, we can go to Backdoc Manager, go to Settings, and create a new agent. Let's give it a name, Graph. Connect, connect, uh, actually this is description, demo. We create an agent and we get back uh, the credentials. Um, we will not ever see the credentials again, so we acknowledge that we will never ever see them again. And I'll load it. And below we have a table with existing agents. And as you can see from the one created right now, the last contact time is never because we have not installed the agent. The others are actively running. And below we have some really dope instructions how to connect your agents, but I will skip it for the demo. And let's go and install them. So now I'm connecting inside the VM of the read replica VM that is running with the GCP CLI. Oops. Perfect. Everything is running. So I have already done the installation part, so I will not spend so much time in the demo. And I have modified the busrc file, so I will expose some environment variables. You can see here the config server address, the token URL, everything that was generated inside the UI from Ops Manager, or in the future, if you want to use the API from Ops Manager, you will get those variables too. Yeah. Perfect. And because you're showing a plain text password, it's blank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And then we augment those variables with things that we, uh, that we want to instance. You can do this by hand or by script. So here you can see we say instance one because in the same host you may have two Neo4j servers running. That's why you configure it like this. You specify the bold URL to communicate the, the credentials. And then um, 
the name you want to give to this instance so you know what you are actively monitoring. And then the next command I have, oh, it's already started, yeah. Um, basically what we did with this command is to start the agent console and redirect all the out output to agent log and don't kill the process if we leave the terminal. And agent successfully started, so let's hope that we will see the instance going back. For each DBMS, for each instance, not database. For each instance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You have to have a separate agent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, actually, it, it depends if they live on the same host or not. If they live on the same host, you can have one agent for two, three, how many instances you wish. Okay. And yeah, now we can see that it already propagated the change to the UI. We can see the read replica here. And if we go to the tabular view and search. For Neo4j, we have the four Neo4j instances appearing, um, two followers, one leader and one read replica in our case. And hopefully the alert is gone, so we don't have an alert, everything worked. Thank God, it's perfect. <laughs> yeah, and where is my mouse? Mm, yeah, and I think that was all, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a couple of summary slides there, aren't there? How yeah. did it work with Aura? I mean, I guess some of the metrics are less relevant, like OS levels and yeah. upgrades, so it's different UI. Yeah, yeah, it's totally different. Richard will, uh, we have a few more slides. Richard so will do the yeah. summary slides at the end. And the, the, your answer might be on here, but I think I know the answer anyway. So, uh, um, so yeah, so um, Ops Manager 1.0. Has uh, it says multiple near for JDBs? It's multiple instances, multiple clusters. Um, it's uh, uh, it's a, the the first version is for self-managed on-premises and self-managed uh, cloud deployments. So it's it's not working with Aura on that first version. Uh, the I know the ops manager team is working with the Aura team to mm. figure out which ones make sense, which metrics they can present, and how it can best add value because it's slightly different, of course, a slightly different situation. Um, we've got the topology, we've got the status, uh, we've got those uh, the metrics dashboards that you saw, and up down alerting, and the alerting is contained within Ops Manager. Tell me if I say something wrong. Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> the alerting is contained within Manager just now, but it's an obvious uh, feature request to get it out there on Slack or or whatever your alerting service now or whatever it is people are using. Um, forward looking, some of the things that are on the uh, on the roadmap are. Uh, right at the top, integrating with uh, Docker and, and making sense of Kubernetes uh, deployments. Uh, really rapid increase in Kubernetes deployments when uh, for self-hosted uh, sales at the moment. Uh, the upgrade and migration, you saw an early version of that. It'd be the first part of that is, is going to be more like an upgrade advisor. You know, have you considered this? These are significant changes. You might want to look at this before you do your upgrade. Um, and we want to gradually bring as much you know, automation into that as we can. Uh, license management in some kind of a form um, is, is, on, is on roadmap. And then down into that, those things we was talking about in the vision, the, so the, the logs, the query, and the performance. Uh, there was a question earlier about uh, getting visibility for the, uh, from, uh, of uh, Aura query logs. Um, the, the, there's ongoing conversations about you know, what, what makes sense to show customers in order that they can uh, tune their queries, um, uh, observe um, anti-patterns and, uh, and problems. Um, uh, and you know, that's, we'll, we'll figure out how to, how to advise on that. Um, and configuration management is actively being um, uh, discussed at the moment. Mm -hmm. I saw in the channels as a PRD on that uh, yeah. just been published. Um, we're trying to make that a lot simpler. Um, and uh, that's, that's, in a, that's been in some builds and there's a lot of work going on on that. So that's the 1.0 and, and beyond um, sort of announcement. And the, the, the when can I get it? Uh, the, the commitment is uh, the end of June, uh, a few weeks. It'll be on the uh, download page of uh, nearforj.com. Um, and uh, yeah, as Costa said earlier, the, the, it's 4.4 .4, uh, 
zero and later. Uh, it is an enterprise edition tool. It's, uh, uh, you know, many of these things don't make sense for community edition and also it's you know, differentiated. Um, uh, but, uh, and it's uh, Windows and Linux uh, deployments um, and Docker Kubernetes um, uh, soon after launch. Uh, and it's, it's, it's for free, so there's no, there's, there isn't a separate license. It comes with your Enterprise Edition license. Um, you host the, uh, the, the, the database that the, the, the Near4j Operations Manager uses, you know, whatever, you know, it's your deployment choice. Um, whether you want to put it on a, a standalone, a separate cluster, or uh, whether, whether you want to run it alongside your uh, production um, or your, your, you know, some of your, some of your infrastructure, it's your call depending on uh, uh, your, your, your situation. Um, yeah, so that's, uh, I think that's about it. Um, thank you. Thank you. Questions.